What is up, my fellow gamers? This is OJ, long time no seen. I've been busy with other stuff, but I'm back today to do this review about this sexy machine I have here on the right on the screen. But, uh, this, <laughs> oh, even Terminator will for, like, forget his duties and go like, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, this is Rocat's Royus Ticket Pro. It came out around 2014, and even though Royus sounds like some Greek guy name that uh, Kratos killed because he made fun of his skin condition, it's still a neat name and still selling through the roof. And now, after some pre-talk, I thought we're gonna start off with some basic specifications. It's 16 centimeters wide, it's 9.5 centimeters high, and it weighs 2.7 pounds. Oh lordy, so don't go and... Finish him! Seriously though guys, don't go smack my bitch up on somebody with his keyboard. That guy probably end up eating soup for his nostrils the rest of his life like some classical 100 years old mafia boss from Italia. Enough with the Mr. Shark info. Head back to go in for a closer look on this beast and poke it with a stick and see what happens. Okay, guys, I'm going in. Here we go. Whew. Man, this is so cool. I gotta keep pushing this. Oh my god. It's like they trapped the trapped unicorn in here. It's so cool. <laughs> the randomness is too damn high. But now you guys are probably like, the fuck was that shit? I'm gonna explain it in a bit, but first I'm gonna zoom up on this bad boy and talk about this design and its futures. Future dreams. As you can see, we got most of his normal key layouts, but there is something missing. This is right here. Which is the numpad panel, but there's a good reason behind it for being missing, because that's the main idea behind this design of this keyboard, is to make it more flexible for those that have a shortage of space for their keyboard. Or, if you want to make more space for something else beside your keyboard, like your coffee mug, some snacks, or even your mouse pad. But my, though mine is too big, it's like Iggy size, so that's not the option for me. Or other stuff. Ahem. Also, if you're in need of a numpad panel, you can always buy a portable one, which you just plug into USB and abracadabra, you got a numpad panel at your disposal. And now, let's spin this keyboard right around. Swoosh. So this is the back side of the keyboard, and the thing I want to show guys are these four rubber pads, which are two down and two up, which prevents this keyboard to slide around like Disney on ice. <laughs> Which can be handy if you're maybe on a boat ride, which is very, very, very unstable. Or if you have maybe abused your keyboard, which is too much. So it's a deformed abomination, this can be very, very handy. Anyway, we checked the backside enough, so back to the front. Swoosh! Ladies and gentlemen. We have reached the finale of this review, which will be about the macro keys, then about the keyboard's own program and its features. Then lastly will be my pros and cons on this keyboard. But first, let's take a look on the macro keys, which are these right here. This keyboard got its own three special macro keys, which can be tweaked with this program that I'm gonna show right now. Swoosh! So here we are in Royus TKL Pro on configuration program, which you have to download from their main site, because I can't remember if it does get automatically installed when you plug in the keyboard. So if it doesn't, uh, go to their main site and choose this keyboard, it should be right there to download. Anyway, we're currently in the key assignment section, which is one of five. I'm gonna talk about the others later, but right now we're gonna focus on this one. So here, as you can see, you have your layout of your keyboard, and the keys you wanna modify or choose to bind to something else. We're gonna currently choose the macro keys, which is T1 and 2T3. And uh, let's see here, we're gonna choose one, I'm gonna choose... You have a lot of stuff here, like multimedia, play... Internet Explorer, who, should, who even used that anymore? Anyway, we're gonna choose Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Buy. And I have actually have chosen for media to play and pause for my Spotify. And then we're gonna go over to the T1, which I use voice also for Global Offensive. 
Then I have open player, a secondary function. And we have T1, a T3 I mean, which is grenades, then email. I haven't changed that one, but fuck it. Fuck it! The other good thing before I'm gonna show a nice demonstration of this T1 to T3, I'm gonna show you another awesome thing. Let's say if you play an old game which just used the arrow keys as move keys, you can actually choose the double view and change it to upper arrow. So you don't have to use those feel for casual upper key positions. You can actually change it to upper key, so you don't have to move your fingers there. So, you do this. No, wait. There. There you see. Proof. Happy. Okay. But let's go back to T1 and gonna show a quick demonstration on C's global offensive right now. So here we go. Swoosh. So here we are in Concentrate Global Offensive Overpass. I'm currently not playing with anyone because I'm just gonna make a quick demonstration to prove to you guys that I'm not talking bullshit like Billy Mays. Bless his soul though. So I'm gonna start off with the buying one which is T1. There we go. Then I'm gonna buy a harmless flashbang. There we go, and I'm close. Then I'm gonna do the T2, which is voice commands or command the radio messages. If you want me to be more professional, then we have the grenades right here. There. Proof enough for you guys? I know this must not be the most comfortable, you know, binds for this kind of gameplay. But as I said, I was gonna show you a demonstration. There's probably a lot more suitable keybinds for this kind of gameplay. But anyway, guys, back to the program. Swoosh. Now I'm gonna show you guys the thing I showed you guys in a video a couple minutes ago. It's like they trapped a unicorn in here. It's so cool. Yeah, that thing, which was the ripple FX effect, which you can configure in this section of the program called key elimination. I think you can pronounce that way. As you guys saw, when you press down the key, it sent like a waves of light through your keyboard, which was really, really cool. But you have also another option you can choose between, which is called fade FX, which works that when you press down the key, you leave a trace of light from the key you press down. But you can also choose how long that light will last through here. I have 30 seconds for no reason I'm gonna use the other one. But there's also another thing called key lightning control. Where you can choose a particular key and make it start blinking. But you can also make it breathe effect. But I'm not gonna do that. So, but the thing you can probably do is like making a smile face on the keyboard which is really cool. If you guys succeed you should send it in the like a video to me or something. That's all I thing I like find interesting in this section, so I'm gonna go over to the main control. Where you can configure your caps lock key, configure your F and key, but this thing I found most interesting is enable and disable keys. Which you can like disable the Windows key so you don't swap out of a game when you play. Then there is the character repeat, which works this way. As you can see, you can like change how fast a key or a letter spams when you press it down or make it slower. So I guess it's handy for a rage kid. Uh, then there's the key illumination brightness, where it's strengthening the light from the effects like fade effect. Then there's the key illumination dimmer timeout screensaver, which works like a screensaver for your keyboard if you go like a 50 minute AFK from your keyboard, it will start doing a lightning or light effect. Then there's the sound feedback, which works that way if you have made like save the profile and change to another profile, it will make a sound. Then there's the trophy notifications, which is this. Rocket RAD, which works as a trophy achievement that they have implanted to this program, which is really cool. When you unlock achievements like using some keys a lot, it will make a sound, like I should mention, well, that thing from the main control. As you can see, I have done a lot of things. I have this keyboard for a couple months, I have almost 200k on some, and I have unlocked 5 or 16, and I'll have 18. So you can do some achievements, I haven't really looked at achievements, so you guys can, I don't know, if they have their on their main page, you can check out. Then there is the last thing, update and support, where you can download your latest driver download. If you press this, you come to their site. Then there's online support, where you come to the support on their site if you press this. 
So that's all in this uh, program I can talk about that I have knowledge of. I hope you found it interesting. So we're gonna go over to the last thing, which is pros and cons. Here we go! Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the final part of this review, which will be my verdicts and my personal pros and cons. I will just post the uh, verdicts to the left right here and go over to the pros. So, the first one is, this is probably the most advanced looking keyboard that I ever had, and I had a lot of keyboards. Then, I never had a keyboard with its own soft program either, so that's really cool. Then it has a lot of awesome features, and it's simple to understand them in a really good way, so that's awesome. And it has its own three special macro keys that you can sign with the program to a to a lot of function choices, but you can also assign any key to work as something else. Then every key feels close in a comfortable way, so it gives a flexible gameplay experience. And it has no numpad panel, which is convenient for me who don't use it often. It will just like collect dust like Madonna's armpits. And I'm so not gonna put up that morbid picture. I don't want you guys to puke up on your keyboards. Though that will make you buy a new one. Maybe even this one, but that you guys will probably send me the damage bill, so that's not probably not a good idea. That's about my pros. I really like this keyboard, but uh, I also have some cons right here. They could have added more, like added USB ports on the keyboard for the like for the portable numpad if you want to get that one, or something else if you like have a shortage of USB ports. Or for comfort reasons, like my webcam who gets in the way when I record with it. Like the cable really gets in the way sometimes. And uh, it got a lot of gaps that really like to collect dust and crumbs and other scraps, which is really annoying. Uh, they could have added more macro keys because there's more space for it if you look to the right, right side of the macro keys. That's about the cons I have for this keyboard, and this was the end of this review. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, I uh, had a bear of laughs. I tried my best, so I hope you guys leave a like up, a thumb up. So, sayonara. Well, thank you very much for watching our video, boys and girls. We love each and every one of you. Now, don't you forget to click that fabulous subscribe button up here so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Speaking of videos, in video number one, OJ reviews West Coast Shields Pure Energy Drink. In video number two, OJ reviews Rocat's Gaming Mouse Tyon. And in video number three, I show OJ's computer parts for his new gaming rig. So with that said, have a nice day and take care people. See you around. Bye bye.